Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Anime Villainous How-To video. I'm Chaos in the Sky, and today I'll be showing you how to play as All for One from My Hero Academia, an Anime Villainous. All for One is a sinister villain who seeks to rule over all of Japan with an iron fist, operating mostly from the shadows. Not only is he dangerously intelligent, he wields the quirk of his own namesake, All for One. With it, he is able to both steal and bequeath whatever quirks he pleases, giving him a multitude of special powers and several devoted followers. With his incredible abilities and genius machinations, All For One is poised to take control of Japan. Unfortunately for him, the number one hero of Japan, All Might, stands in his way. Having fought All Might to near death once already, the mighty hero is the only one that truly poses a threat to All For One's ambition. Once All For One manages to defeat All Might, he can finally take dominion over all of Japan, and do whatever he pleases. All For One is powerful and cunning, and the only thing that holds him back from his goals is the very existence of All Might. Because of that, his objective in Anime Villainous is simple. Defeat the number one hero All Might in a clash, as All For One is the only villain that could ever stand a chance of pulling it off. Let's look at All Might first and foremost, since everything All For One does leads up to defeating him. In Anime Villainous, All Might is a hero tile that starts in All For One's territory at the Kamino Ward Crater, the rightmost location. This means that until you complete All For One's objective and defeat All Might, he will always be covering the top actions of one of All For One's locations. All Might has a staggering 15 strength, the highest default strength value in the Battle Begins box. He also has an ability that he cannot be defeated using allies, meaning that All For One clashing with him is the only way that All Might can be defeated. Because of this, All For One will have to build himself up to All Might's level of strength to be able to clash with him, and thus complete his objective. All For One starts with zero strength, but he has a multitude of ways to gain strength through the use of strength tokens. However, All Might doesn't just wait around for All For One to buff himself. All Might's second ability is that whenever All For One clashes, All Might then moves to All For One's location and causes All For One to lose one strength. This means that having All For One clash with any other heroes will set you back on your journey to gain enough strength to defeat All Might. It does, however, give you a bit of control on where All Might ends up at, and sometimes you may just even find it necessary to lose one strength to get another annoying hero out of your way. Now that we know how All Might works, let's get into how All For One will gain the strength necessary to overcome him. As mentioned, All For One has zero strength at the start of the game, a far way off from where he needs to be for victory. Luckily, his ability will be a huge help towards getting more strength. All For One's ability is that once per turn, you may either move a strength token from All For One to an ally at your location, or from that ally to All For One. This means you'll be able to take strength tokens from your mini ally cards, or potentially even give them some strength if it proves beneficial to All For One. Of course, you'll need for your allies in All For One to get some strength to make use of this ability. You'll be doing that through a handful of different cards, so let's start going through All For One's villain deck. First, we have three effect cards, all of which allow you to get more strength tokens out into your territory. Those cards are Strength Enhancer, Multiplier, and Hypertrophy. Strength Enhancer is the most straightforward of all for one strength gaining cards. When played, you can choose up to two characters in your territory, and they both gain one strength. Characters in Anime Villainous are defined as anything with the strength value, even if that value is zero. So all for one, any of all for one's allies, and any heroes are all considered characters. With Strength Enhancer, you can give All For One or any of his allies a plus one strength token. You can even use it to give a hero one more strength, if you have a plan coming up to steal that strength away from them with another card. Another classic strategy is to give All For One a strength token as well as an ally at his location, then immediately have All For One use his ability to take that extra strength token. This essentially makes Strength Enhancer a plus two strength for All For One. Following Strength Enhancer, we have Multiplier, which has a wider range of strength gain potential. When you play Multiplier, all for one in each ally in your territory that already has one or more plus one strength tokens, then gains one strength. A good way to further buff all for one and any allies that already have strength tokens. This can go a long way in letting all for one take more strength tokens from those buffed allies, or for those buffed allies to have an easier time being used in vanquishes. Lastly is Hypertrophy, a card with a big gain but a small caveat. You must choose a character with no plus one strength tokens on them, then that character gains three strength. This is All For One's only card that gives more than one strength token to a single target. It could be a huge boon in strengthening an ally, or if you're lucky and draw it early, give All For One a strong start in boosting his own strength. We've already talked a lot about how you'll be putting strength tokens on allies for All For One to then take, so let's actually look through the many allies at All For One's disposal, and what their abilities help him accomplish. All For One's two most expensive allies are Dr. Garaki and Shigaraki, 
both of whom have zero strength, but incredible abilities. Shigaraki's ability is that all heroes at his location get minus three strength, making them all far easier to deal with. This can help other allies with doing vanquishes, but even more so than that, Shigaraki's ability also works on All Might. This means that with Shigaraki, you can get All Might down to 12 strength rather than 15, a significantly easier goal. Be sure to realize that Shigaraki's ability says that heroes get minus 3 strength, not that they lose 3 strength. This means that Shigaraki's ability does not put any tokens on heroes, it's just a blanket effect on all heroes that share a location with Shigaraki. Dr. Garaki, meanwhile, has an ability that deals with allies rather than heroes. Whenever an ally other than Dr. Garaki is discarded from All for One's territory, you get to draw two cards. This helps All for One a great deal with getting through his deck quicker, and we'll see later there are fake cards that discard allies, making Dr. Garaki a good way to get some benefit out of an unfortunate ally loss. Next, we have three more members of the League of Villains, Kuragiri, Dobby, and Toga. Kuragiri is one of All for One's most versatile allies, having the highest default strength value of 3, while also giving his own location a discard cards action. Since All for One always has at least one hero in his territory, Kuragiri giving you an extra discard action is a major boon. Following Kuragiri, we have Dobby, whose ability is that he can be used to defeat a hero at any location when performing a vanquish action. This makes Dobby a prime candidate for any extra strength that All for One can afford to leave out, given that he can hit a hero from any location. Then we have Toga, whose ability is meant to help All for One take strength from heroes. Before All for One moves at the start of your turn, you may pay one power to move a strength token from a hero at Toga's location to Toga herself. There are numerous ways that heroes can end up with strength tokens, and All for One will want Toga as a reliable option to take those tokens for himself. The last three League of Villain members are Twice, Mr. Compress, and Spinner. Twice's ability is that when an ally at his location is discarded, you may discard twice to instead put that ally into your hand. Very useful to keep your more important allies from ending up in the discard, especially given those ally discarding fate cards I mentioned earlier. Mr. Compress is much more of a utility ally, as when he's played you may move an ally or a hero to his location. Be aware that if you move a hero though, Mr. Compress then loses one strength. This can be good to get allies with strength tokens over to all for one, or even a hero you need to defeat. It's also a great help for getting heroes off of locations you don't want covered, especially if that hero is All Might. Spinner is a bit more basic than his other fellow villains. When played, Spinner then gains one strength. Nothing super fancy, but it makes him stronger than most allies when played, and if nothing else, All for One can snatch away that strength token for himself. There's one last ally that All for One has access to, and that's his mutant monsters, the Nomu. There are three copies of Nomu in All for One's deck, whereas all his other allies are unique. They have zero strength, but their ability is that they get plus one strength for each strength token they have. Much like Shigaraki, the Nomu use the term get and not gain, so they don't get another token on top of their current one. This essentially means that a plus one strength token counts for two strength if it's on a Nomu. They're very useful for vanquishing, or just as targets for your other strength gaining cards so that All for One can then take them away. With all of All for One's allies covered, we have a few more effects, schemes, and a form card to look at. First we'll look at Rivets and Kinetic Booster, two ally based effects. Rivets is a zero cost card that allows you to move up to two strength tokens from an ally to all for one, no matter their locations. You also gain one power for each token you move, a great way to both strengthen all for one, and also gain some extra power. Kinetic Booster, meanwhile, is an effect that lets you perform a vanquish action. For each ally that would be discarded during this action, you may pay one power instead. All for one gets a lot of use out of his allies, so being able to sacrifice a little extra power to keep them in play can go a long way. Next up are All for One's two schemes, Power Theft and League of Villains. Power Theft is a scheme that triggers whenever the targeted player defeats a hero. All for One then gets the option to move a strength token from another character in his territory to himself. Notice it says character and not ally, which means you can take a strength token from a hero if they have one. Our other scheme is League of Villains, which triggers whenever the targeted player plays a hero during their own turn. All for One may then choose an ally from his discard pile, pay their cost, and play them. A good way to get back an ally you had to use in a vanquish, discard for some reason, or they got discarded by a fake card. All for one does best when he has allies available, so being able to replay them is very useful. Now we're at the last two effect cards in all for one's deck, Air Cannon and Warping. Air Cannon is easy, it lets you clash with a hero at any location. Do keep in mind however that even if the hero isn't at your location, upon clashing, All Might will move to all for one and cause him to lose strength. Although that means Air Cannon can be a good option to force All Might to move to a location you'd prefer. 
You can also use Air Cannon to clash with All Might, assuming you've gained enough strength to do so. Following Air Cannon, we have Warping, All for One's best card for positioning both heroes and allies. When played, Warping allows you to move an ally or hero at All for One's location to any location. After doing that, you can then choose to also move an ally or hero from any location to All for One's. Remember that both movements say that you may, meaning you don't have to do both if you don't want to. If you just want to move an ally or hero away from All for One, or towards them, you can choose to do just that and no more. At long last, we have the final card in All for One's villain deck, his form card, Court Combination. Court Combination is a form that gives All for One a new base strength of 4, essentially meaning it's plus 4 more strength on top of however many tokens he has. It also changes his ability to where after clashing, All for One does not lose any strength from All Might's ability, and you then discard Court Combination. While Quirk Combination does stop All Might from taking away one strength from All for One, don't forget that All Might will still move to All for One's location. Also, thanks to Quirk Combination giving All for One a default strength of 4, it makes it where you only need 11 strength tokens to match All Might's default strength of 15. You can pair this with Shigaraki's ability as well, making it where All for One only needs 8 strength tokens, assuming All Might has no strength tokens himself. Quirk Combination is a fantastic way for All for One to deal with any other annoying heroes and not lose any of his strength token progress towards All Might, or to give him that final boost he needs to defeat All Might and enter Showdown. Of course, when so many villains gather together to try and take down All Might, you can bet a bunch of heroes will be there to stop them. All for One's Fate deck is stocked with the many heroes that stand up against him, with a few effects and his challenge on top. So let's look into the Fate cards that will try to slow All for One down in his quest to topple All Might. Our first hero is Endeavor, the number two hero in all of Japan. While All Might is All for One's only true threat, Endeavor isn't someone he can just ignore. Having a strength of four makes Endeavor difficult to defeat, but more than that, his ability sets All for One back in his true goal. Whenever Endeavor is played or moved to All for One's location, All for One loses one strength. This includes whenever All for One moves Endeavor to himself by way of warping or Mr. Compress. There are also other fake cards that will move Endeavor around. Because of this, Endeavor is a hero that you'll want to remove from your territory as soon as possible. Following Endeavor, we have Midoriya and Bakugo, the cause of all that ally discarding we've been talking about. While Endeavor is a big problem for All for One, Midoriya is truly his biggest threat, as he is the inheritor of All Might's quirk, one for all. Midoriya has a high base strength of 5, but what truly makes him dangerous is, of course, his ability. Whenever Midoriya is played or moved, the one doing so may discard an ally from Midoriya's new location. This does have a drawback, however. Midoriya will lose one strength each time he discards an ally. This means that much like Endeavor, the longer Midoriya is in All for One's territory, the more problems he'll cause. Midoriya does weaken himself with each subsequent use, though, so he can be at least a bit easier to deal with than Endeavor. Bakugo has a similar ability to Midoriya, in that when he is played, the one playing him may discard an ally from Bakugo's location. However, unlike Midoriya, who loses a strength when doing so, Bakugo actually gains one strength when played to a location with an ally. In exchange, Bakugo's ability is only usable when he's played, and can't be repeated on being moved like Midoriya or Endeavor. Midoriya and Bakugo aren't the only students that try to foil All for One's plans to defeat All Might. We have three other students that assist their fellow heroes, Uraraka, Todoroki, and Ida. All three of these heroes have abilities that move other heroes, meaning they pair very well with either Endeavor or Midoriya to trigger their abilities. Ida's ability is that when he is played, he can move both himself and a hero at his location to any location. Upon doing so, both Ida and the hero moved with him gain one strength. This works especially well with Midoriya, as it basically counters the strength loss of Midoriya's own ability. After Ida, we have Uraraka, who when played can move another hero to any location. After that hero has been moved, Uraraka then gains one strength for each location that has a hero in All for One's territory. Since Uraraka herself counts for this ability, she's always guaranteed to gain at least one strength, and can get all the way up to four strength if All for One's territory is covered in heroes. The last student is Todoroki, the only hero that can actually move more than one hero at a time. When Todoroki is played, the one playing him may move each other hero at Todoroki's location to an adjacent location of their choice. Each time a hero is moved, Todoroki then gains one more strength. This means Todoroki gains strength not only for his own ability, but he also gains strength from Ida or Uraraka's abilities. He'll also gain more strength if All Might moves himself with his own ability, or if All for One moves a hero with one of his own cards. If you aren't careful, Todoroki's strength value can very quickly get out of hand. 
As we've seen with All Might and Endeavor, students aren't the only problems All For One will be running into. There are three more professional heroes that will arrive on the scene to try and put a stop to All For One's plans. Those being Best Genist, Gran Torino, and Eraserhead. Eraserhead is likely to be the most problematic of these three, given that his ability is to ignore the abilities of All For One's allies. So long as Eraserhead is in play, none of All For One's allies can use any of their special quirks. Because of this, All For One will want to dispose of him quickly. While not as annoying as Eraserhead often is, Best Genus also has an ability that limits All For One's allies. So long as Best Genus is in play, All For One cannot move his allies by any means. They'll all be stuck at their current locations until the number 4 best hero is handled. Lastly, we have Gran Torino, an old adversary to All For One and still a thorn in his side. Gran Torino has a strength of 4, making him irritating to deal with. Even worse is his ability. Whenever Gran Torino would be defeated during a clash, he instead gets moved to any location, then loses one strength. This means you'll have to defeat Gran Torino using a Vanquish action as opposed to clashing. Although clashing with him to weaken Gran Torino and also move him into the sights of one of All For One's allies can be a very useful strategy. That's every hero in the Fate deck checked off the list, but we still have three more cards to look at. First up, we have the two effects in All For One's Fate deck, Rescue and Plus Ultra. Rescue is a card that lets the one playing it choose and play a hero with a strength of two or less from All For One's Fate discard pile. The only viable targets for Rescue are the four students that aren't Midoriya, meaning Bakugo, Uraraka, Todoroki, and Ida. Rescue can replay any of these four from the Fate discard, which means either more hero movement or Bakugo discarding an ally, neither of which are things All For One likes to see. Plus Ultra, meanwhile, is very simple. When played, it has every hero on All For One's territory gain one strength. Often annoying as it can make heroes more difficult to defeat, or even worse, buff up All Might to where you need more strength to defeat them. But it can also give you the opportunity to steal some of that strength, so it isn't the worst card to see come up. Finally, we have All For One's Challenge, One For All. The quirk that cost All For One is Empire, and created his arch nemesis All Might. When One For All is played, the one who played it gets to find and play Midoriya wherever they want. This of course will activate Midoriya's ability of discarding an ally if there is one, and remove any minus one tokens Midoriya may have had beforehand if he was already in play. The only way for All For One to get rid of One For All is to defeat Midoriya. However, in doing so, Midoriya will be shuffled back into All For One's Fate deck rather than going to the discard pile. This means he'll be back around within a few Fate actions, ready to cause All For One even more trouble. You may think that means you should just leave Midoriya be, but the longer Midoriya is in All For One's territory, the more opportunity for him to be moved by other heroes and discard more allies. Truly an irksome quirk, one that All For One wishes he could do away with once and for all. We've now covered all you need to know to play as All For One, an incredibly long-lived villainous mastermind, stopped only by the strongest quirk that he himself accidentally created. You'll have to steal and pass around strength tokens non-stop to correct All For One's mistake, and finally do away with both All Might and the many heroes he's inspired. If you have any questions relating to All For One, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer you. Also, check out the description for the playlist to see all the other anime villainous how-to videos if there's another character you want to learn about. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you again for more anime villainous videos in the future. Until then, farewell.